Hello and welcome back to the FPL Tom preview stream. We are back after the international break and there has been plenty going off during that time period. Obviously, we've had the double game week 34 announcement and the new FPL challenge game mode. Me and Jake are going to talk about all of that and my potential wildcard for this game week as well. Jake, how did you spend your international break? What did you get up to? What did I get up to? That is the question. Not too much. Um, watched. I, I think I actually watched more EFL than I watched international because I watched the whole of your game mm. against Colchester and I think I watched maybe 10 minutes of the England-Brazil game. Didn't catch any of the Belgium game. Um, so, yeah, still, despite there being loads of internationals and some quite mouth-watering clashes for us, mm. um, I was just not interested in the slight system. was just begging for that football to come back and was holding on to any kind of football league football I could I could get my hands on. I was actually a little bit disappointed, I think. I think I would have rather watched Wales play, but that's all on that Veer play, isn't it? Yeah, it is indeed. I mean you could have watched it in Welsh on that S C four channel that they've got. But... Is that on is that on the telly or do you have to go on like the internet for it? No, no, it's a proper channel. It's a proper channel where they just speak Welsh. So oh. yeah. Oh. There you go. Oh well. You look rather snug there, yeah. lad. Oh, mate. Um, yeah, I, I haven't taken my coat off, and I won't be taking it off throughout the stream. You can comment all you like, you know, but some of us might have contracted a cold over the international break, and it's absolutely killed me off, and that's why I look like shit today, but that's fine. That's fine. That's how I spent my international break. Um, but yeah, I, I thought before we'd obviously go and have a look at game week 29 and what we did that week, and obviously moving into this week, I thought we'd talk about the new game mode to start off with. FPL mm -hmm. Challenge, it was announced over the international break. Now, I imagine a lot of people are familiar with kind of the concept and the rules behind it, but when it was announced, what do you think, well, what were your initial thoughts about it? Uh, to be honest, personally, I was quite excited about it. Mm -hmm. um, we've just spoken off air and you said it's kind of my kind of ball game that way. It's just one hit, doesn't matter what you did, whether you effed up or whether you had a blinding week, it's just straight back to square on each game week. I think that suits me quite well, as we'll see when we look towards this game week and how I've got to prepare my team. Um, so, yeah, for the, I actually think it's going to be quite enjoyable. I like that they're doing it. I don't know if this will be a plan for them to do it across the whole season next season, maybe, but mm. I actually quite like that it's just the last, like, what, eight game weeks. I think that yeah. makes it quite interesting. It's a nice little way to experiment and see how many people get involved. Um, but, yeah, and I'm intrigued to know what the what each rule will be. It's kind of like that game mode, isn't it? On kickoff on FIFA, you can have like all those different game modes, like no rules and like one player goes off every time you score. It's kind of like that, but for fantasy football. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm quite intrigued by it, to be honest. No, it does. It does seem like a good concept. And I definitely think, like you said, it's a good thing that they're doing it towards the back end of this season as kind of like a beta testing phase. So if they do mm. want to launch it for next season, I feel they'll understand what works, maybe what doesn't work. I think one of the major criticisms yeah. for me is around kind of the prize pool. Now, is it like a trip to New yeah. York they're offering out at the moment? That's like the top, the yeah, top prize. Is that, just, is, that just, is that for the winner or for the top 10? Exactly, exactly. And, and I, I kind of discussed this with you off air. I said, if they want to get more people playing this game mode, I feel they need like a top 1,000 kind of prizes. And it doesn't even have to be anything big. It could just be like a Premier League mug a football, a scarf of, say, your certain favourite club. Because it's not mm -hmm. going to cost them a lot to do that. And if they can get, obviously, a lot of people engaged and playing this game mode, I think that's quite rewarding. I think otherwise, yeah. what could happen is you have people that just kind of don't bother with it after a couple of weeks or just forget and then just think, oh, fuck it, I'm not going to do it again. You know what I mean? Yeah, because I feel like that's happened in the draft version, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's happened in our draft league. Like, I'll occasionally well, I mean, look at speak it. for yourself. <laughs> but, like, we've got two other people in that league, and I don't think they've touched it since, like, the second week we set it up. Yeah, no, that is true. So, it's only realistically me and you playing it, and I only play it when I remember to do my team. So, I feel like if there was some incentive, maybe some better prizes or a bigger prize pool, then I feel it could have, you know, huge scope for the game, to be honest. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, what would you say would be your top pick for this week then for that mode? As in, uh, well, I think like it has to be. 
for me, it'd be Son. I mm. think home to Luton. Uh, I've I've done my team already and I've stuck the captain's armband on him. Um, this game mode this week is, if people don't know, is like an unlimited budget. So you can literally just put everyone in there, regardless of how much they may be. In the usual fantasy game, you may be capped at that hundred million. You've got like nine hundred ninety nine point nine nine million, so you're gonna have no worries of price tag. So you can just dump them all in. Of course, there is that. Um, contrasting viewpoint you've got to have of the fact that you probably want in a normal game week the likes of Saka, Haaland, De Bruyne but of course injuries and the fact that those two sides are playing each other might put a little bit more jeopardy in those choices but yeah mm. for me I think Son's the clear one. Alright okay I get that. I think I think like we spoke about this game mode definitely favours your playing style just down Erratic. to the fact. I feel, I feel if someone's going to win it they're not going to have like the popular players, if that makes sense. Mm. Yeah. It is going to be the weird players with kind of strong fixtures that just randomly pop pop up. Like it feels like yeah. a, a game mode where Ollie McBurney might have an amazing week. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like we said, like there's um, Fulham have, have like, absolutely smashed it last week against Spurs. Moon is, he's just come out of nowhere and done really well. They're playing Sheffield United. So if you bank on him, maybe sit, like, it just depends, like, because, like you say, the winners are going to be people that do go for the road people and don't maybe follow the guidelines where they see all this money given to them and go, oh, we're going to go Haaland and Saka and all this expensive, all these expensive players. Instead, going for someone that, like you say, has just a good game week, yeah, a good game on the cards and absolutely smashes it. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, right, we're going to move on to our famous. I think it's become famous. I think it's famous now. Uh, it is our most famous award. We're going to give Bed Shitter of the Week, and you guys are going to vote for it in the chat. Uh, obviously, we've got to cast our minds back to Game Week 29. For a lot of people, wasn't a successful week, and there's a lot of contenders this week for potential Bed Shitters. Jake, there are two men on screen. Maybe you want to go for them. Maybe you want to go for one of the other many candidates that could be applicable for this game week. But who are you going to go for for your bed shitter of the week for game week 29? Um, I think I think there is a standout in my opinion. I do think it is Son. I think mm. everyone will have... The, the majority of people will have gone. He's the clear and obvious captain for that game week considering there were that many people missing. Spurs had the best game week on paper and Son was in decent form. He was the standout guy, I think, that people would have wanted to back. Um, the only person I was actually going to say an honourable mention for, I thought maybe you'd have him on there, but I'm sure you'll have your reasons for Regulon, uh, was birthday boy Ivan Tony because you did hype him up quite a lot and he did nothing. I don't, I don't, I don't remember hyping Ivan Tony up a lot. That's that doesn't <laughs> seem like me. I'm, I'm not that type of guy. I, that was definitely not me. <laughs> but I'm going to go for Son anyway. All right, I think that's fair. He was the most captain player last game week didn't deliver did he did not deliver in the slightest uh for me i'm obviously gonna go for uh, regulon i didn't have him in my team but i know a lot of people obviously brought him in a few game weeks ago because he had the double then the blank and then obviously a lot of people brought him in on the free hit as well there was a controversy around whether or not he was going to be fully fit and available for this game week then he was so people were rejoicing then he gets sent off and finishes with minus two there's kind of a whole narrative to him, you know what I mean? It's like in films where there's this kind of arc, this character arc. I feel so, like Regulon over the past few game weeks, he's had this character arc and it's kind of ended a little bit nasty and negative. So for me, he's going to be my bed shitter of the week. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I'm just going to put those in. If you do, if you guys have any questions as well that you want answering throughout the stream, do get them in. I can see we've got FPL MFZ. He's chatting to himself. Come on, guys. Get some comments in for him. Have a little bit of uh, participation. You know, the poor guy's just out here talking to himself. Uh, bed. There we go. A little bit of conversation. Oh, yes. Oh, I love that emoji. <laughs> it's a good emoji, uh, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I'd say, to be fair, I feel like it's it's a harsh week. I think it's... Um... It's one of those. It's like the COVID title that Liverpool got. Like you know, there's just a bit of, just a bit of controversy over it. There's just a bit of sh overshadowing over the actual deservedness of. Oh, that's just not a word. But like, you as much as stick with and it. as much as as much as football fans, if you take off your like bias head off and stuff, 
Liverpool deserve to win that league during COVID. But they won it during COVID. There were no fans, blah, blah, blah. This is kind of the same. If Son or if Regulon wins this, are they uh, are they gonna are they gonna go back? Say Son wins it, it's like Richarlison gonna go up to him and be like, "But mate, it was a free hit week. Come on, not everyone was playing. I don't think you deserve it really." So um, I feel like this one may not be quite as honourable as the Nicholas Jacksons early on in the season or the odd Darwin Nunes one. If you get what I mean. Yeah, yeah, it does. It, it is a little bit of an empty game week, wasn't it? Um, mm. But it still stunk. So they're all. St- yeah. Everyone still counts, you know what I mean? Doesn't doesn't matter how many games there were, you were still stinkers. Um, MF, uh, FPL MFZ has said thoughts on no Saka in the wild card. I definitely think it's an option, especially if you've got that free hit kicking do. about. I would have to agree with it, to yeah. be honest. Well, I did a wild card. <laughs> I'm sure I was going to touch on it at some point, but I did a wild card, sorted it out today, and realised I'd already done my wild card this season. Um, and I had Sal. I dropped Saka. Um, I think there are just so many players that are a little bit more in value. Mm. So you have to kind of move your money around a little bit more. And Saka's like 8.9 million or something around that. So it is a lot of money you can spread out across a lot of players that have really good games coming up. Mm. All right. Fair enough. I thought you was going to add a little bit more there, but you kind of curtailed a little bit early. So we're going to move on to your team for game week 29. And surprisingly, Jake, no free hit. You did take a minus four, but uh, uh, well, I've got FPL challenge up. That's not, that's not what we want. We want that one. There we go. Um, you actually had a pretty good week, to be fair to you, mate. Got the captaincy decision right. You're in the deadline stream, giving it the big end. But you know what? It worked out, mate. It paid off. Talk us through what went well. Yeah, it really did pay off. Um, I don't know where it came from. I think it might have been the preview stream prior to this game week where someone mentioned Fafana and I tits up thinking he was one minute Norwegian the next minute not knowing who he even was and then looked into it a little bit more and was like you know what Burnley against Brentford this is the only chance Burnley have of really holding on to the grasp of Premier League safety if they lose this game I really cannot see them accumulating the right amount of points to stay up whereas I, I just felt like they had to win against Brentford to have any hope of bouncing on but if they if they let, went back into the change rooms having been beaten at home to Brentford I think that would have just done them in mm. so yeah I, I just went with it went with Fafana was like it's not really gonna I'm not gonna be blown away unless Son does something crazy which of course we've mentioned he didn't so I think regardless of that I was just banking really on Son doing nothing which paid off for me I know I had him in just to maybe make that a little bit less painful had he done something mad against Fulham. Um, but yeah, no, Fafana went well. Bit of a shame that he's now ineligible to play Chelsea, but we'll move on to that shortly, I'm sure. But Burnley do have a fairly decent run, so I'm, I'm happy of him in the long run. It just depends how much he's rotated, maybe, with Amdouni back, with um, Benson back. I don't know if that will maybe put his position up for grabs a little bit. And the fact that, annoyingly, as much as he did score, he missed the open goal so it could have been a whole lot better I thought I was going to have egg on my face for the second game week running after Solanke skied his penalty after a triple captain then but he has got that goal I've beaten the average which I'm happy with um, and yeah of course my other mind I took the minus and brought in Gibbs White and that also paid off because he got me an assist so yeah the two transfers I made really did work yeah 100% mate and more than beating the average this week you had a huge green arrow of about 450,000. So, you know what? You're slowly pulling it back round. It's getting a little bit respectable. So, I think, I think I'm going to have to look for someone else, to be honest, to co-host this show now. Nah, lad, it's all right. We know how it works. We know how it works. I go one step up and two steps back the following week. So, we shall have to wait and see. I'd put a pin in it. Well, I, th- I think that quite, you know, leads nicely on to talk about your team for this week. Because we both thought you had a wild card still left in hand. You don't. Mm. And this team's starting to look a little bit... um, How do I put it? Wobbly. Yeah. Wobbly is probably the right word. I was thinking more cow shit. um, But wobbly. We'll go with wobbly. (laughs) Talk us through it, mate. What what are you thinking? Captaincy, transfers. What's the plan? Um, Okay, so I think... um pretty much set on taking a minus four. I think I know the two players I want to bring in. Mm-hmm. Um, 
yeah, like we say, I've I've had a look at it. I've made so many notes about a wild card, brought up a lovely wild card team, and then yeah, um, shot myself in the foot really by realizing that I'd already done it. Thankfully, did it like realize that just before I took a minus thirty four or thirty six or whatever it was. Um, but yeah, I, I've had a little look at like what fixtures the players I've got still in my team have remaining, and I think the, the decision I've come to is I'm happy to get rid of Saka, even of course my team is lacking in that expensive quality. There's no doubt that he'll play even though he's got a bloody arrow over him. Um, but yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a minus four, I'm going to take out Saka and bring Salah back, and I think I'm going to take out Kudus and bring Cole Palmer back. Chelsea's run is uh, looking amazing. I've fallen for that before, I know you have as well. Like yeah. I think Six months ago, Chelsea had an immense run of fixtures, but just cocked up every opportunity they could. That could happen again, but I think it's an opportunity that I can't really lay, lay to waste, really, because they do have some really good fixtures over the next four game weeks with a double included. Um, potentially another one as well, I think, with Arsenal or something, I think, further down the line. So, yeah, I, I, I think Cole Palmer is a cert. That will save me a little bit of money, which is still crazy to say. Mm. Cole Palmer saving me money. And it leads me nicely on to the following few game weeks because, of course, for fun, we'll be back. I like Burnley's fixtures. I mean, who knows how they'll do. Maybe I'll be taking them out before before too long. But for a side that's struggling, they do have a nice run of games. And so if anyone's going to pop up with a goal, it'll be the likes of Fafana or maybe I'm doing you now that he's back. So I'll bring him back next week after his this game against his parent club. Watkins, I'm going to keep him in for this game because they've got Wolves, but they do have a few tricky games coming up, which then allows me to consider, depending on how the City-Arsenal game goes, probably bringing Gerling Harlem back come Tuesday. Mm -hmm. All right, interesting. Who's going to be the captain for this week then? Obviously, you bring in Salah in, Liverpool fan. Brighton defensively have left a few questions. Son's become a very popular captain pick. Now Richarlison's a doubt for the game, so probably means he's up front i've put the armband on son for you i imagine that's the way you're probably going to go with this i think so i think the only other option i would go for actually is cole palmer okay. um if i bring him in at home to burnley i do feel like he's just he's pretty much inevitable at the moment he's the only person that seems to create something chelsea do have a lot of opportunities and whenever they score or assist whenever they score palmer is either the creator or the scorer mm. so um yeah, I think that's the only person that would really tempt me away from Son. Um, <clears throat> Son at home to Luton does seem like an obvious pick, but of course we know what Spurs have been like and what they can be like. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll see closer to the time. It'll probably be a, a um, deadline day panic again on Saturday. Do you think potentially maybe Cole Palmer's price point is putting you off potentially captaining him? Possibly, yeah, maybe so. Like um, if him, him and Son are the same price, would you mm. be, would you be captaining Cole Palmer? Or because he's such a low price, maybe you have like a perceived value of him that you don't think he's. That might be of. it, you know. That might be it because, like I say, like Cole Palmer is the one that's like ooing and ahhing for me to be the person that would maybe take the armband off Son, and maybe subconsciously that is the only reason why I've not done it. So it's a good, uh, good bit of food for thought that. I'm just saying, you know, you know, Burnley. If uh, you know, if they're one of the worst defenses in the league. If mm. that was, say, Son, Salah, Saka against Burnley at home, I don't think there'd be any doubts, would there? Really? Yeah, definitely. Cool, cool. Uh, another question I had for you: What is the chip strategy you're currently thinking? Obviously, you've got the free hit and the bench boost left. No wild card, as we've uh, come to discover today. But uh, talk us through what you're thinking with your chip strategy. Well, I think bench boost is going to be game week 37. I've spoken about this for weeks now, and I think I'm going to commit to that. Okay. Um, that's one thing I've known, even if I didn't know that I'd use my wild card. I have known that my bench boost has been saved for 37. I don't think I'll sh switch that around with 34, but game week 34 probably is the game week that I'll use my free hit. Um, closer to the time, maybe if I've got the right amount of players already, or the right quality of players, and my bench is looking nice, then I could always alternate, uh, alternate that and just go with the bench boost in game week 34 and then save my free hit for 37. But I think those two game weeks are the nailed on wild, uh, like token. 
So yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. At the moment, it's 34 free hit, 37 bench boost. Okay, okay. I like that. I like that. I'm on a very similar strategy myself, as we will come on to uh, potentially see. We have had some questions in the chat. A turkey in a bush, who is a channel member, so shout out to him. He said, should I go for Gusto in for POW? For me personally, I think I would. I don't know about you, Jake. Um... I get. I definitely would like would recommend Gusto because he has got such a good run of games. Um, it's just a Villa at home to Wolves is a game maybe where Powell could get himself a clean sheet. Is the only thing I'd say. Uh, is he is he fit and everything? Is everything all right with him? Because if he's going to play, I do feel like I'd want to keep Torres in maybe for one week. And if there's anywhere else, you could take a defender out. But at the same time, the longevity of Gusto, as long as he stays fit and eligible for the games, then his like his points total should well and truly over like overwhelm Torres is over the next like four or five weeks. Yeah, I'd agree with that second part of that statement. To be honest, uh, he also put thank you. Uh, you're welcome, Jake, for the uh, Davy D suggestion. <laughs> he didn't know off. what he was what he was what, what he was uh, getting me in for, but it's paid <laughs> off. So they so appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, someone else has asked. Talk to me about Bradley. How nailed is he for the next two? I have an update on that, but if you want to take oh, it, mate. Well, I mean, if you've got an update, I don't want to put egg on my face and say, oh, yeah, he's a banker, and you say well, he's just broken his leg yesterday. No, no, so no. Go on. Uh, it looks like Trent's going to be out for another two weeks. So I think that's pretty positive for Bradley. Obviously, there's quite a short time frame as well from game week 30 to pretty much game week 32 as well. Um, mm. This weekend is game week 30. Then it's game week 31 midweek then it's game week 32. So you'd probably imagine Bradley is going to feature in the next three games at least. Um, so, yeah, I, I think if you're on a wild card or you've already maybe held him over the, 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 the blank game week, I think it's definitely worth just keeping him for the next two at least. Yeah, keeping him is definitely worthwhile. Um, there is still that rotation with Gomez and Robertson because Gomez can play either side and, of course, the Simicast as well. Um, and with the the turnaround, like we say, of these next two game weeks, then of course the weekend um, in like 10 days time, there's yet another game week. And then there's European football for Liverpool to contend with. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think Klopp's going to rush Trent back if he can avoid it, because of course he did that and it's led with him having a bit of a lengthy layoff. True. Um, True. So yeah, I, I think Bradley featuring is a certainty, but it's just how long he lasts. He seems to start games and then get taken off for Maybe a, maybe a Robertson and Gomez will switch over to right back or something like that. Um, <clears throat> but I don't think it's a bad person to have in your team if you've already got him. If you're thinking of bringing him in, just maybe worth looking around to see if there's any more certainties to start. But that that being said, he's a cheap, aspect, a cheap player to have. I think the only thing that could do you in is if you've got him playing and he only gets a couple of points for just featuring and coming off the bench because I do feel like the important thing there is he will feature in every game it's just how many points he gets and will he get those clean sheet points or those assists that's wait we just have to wait and see he did score though for uh, for Ireland in the week yeah a turkey in a bush just said that he said did you see Bradley's banger against Scotland William style he's yeah I did it was um, Nathan Patterson shot bed a little bit and passed the ball straight to him, so Everton to Liverpool. Yeah, I did see that one. Um, so, yeah, well done, Nathan Patterson. Well done to mm. him. Uh, what other questions have we got? Uh, Jamie's in the chat as well. He said, what's up? We're doing all right. Um, we've had a question. I can get Salah in one move, but I have failed to decide who to transfer out, Bowen or Saka. What do you think, Tom? Uh, I'm going to let you answer that one. You've been obviously taking a look at the fixtures. You did all your wildcard prep. Who do you think is going to be the better player to take out there, Bowen or Saka for Salah? Gosh, I'd probably take out Bowen if you can keep Saka just because it's Arsenal. Mm -hmm. I think as much as I would look at what I've written down and stuff, Arsenal's like next few game weeks aren't like a, an easy run. But Arsenal are wiping the floor of everyone. They've got the team spirit. They seem to be just getting through games. Um, I wouldn't even say the City game is a write-off for them. I think they're going to be the most likely to get some points from City out of anyone at the moment, maybe bar Liverpool after that game a few weeks ago. But even so, I think the fact that Arsenal made us look a little bit sloppy 
would just show just how good they are at the moment. Um, so yeah, if you can afford if you can afford to keep Saka and bring Salah in, fair enough, I'd go for that. Um, and then you've got Saka in the future to maybe cash in on. Should you want to bring someone else in that's a bit more expensive? All right. Yes, I, I think I'm pretty much in that camp to be honest. I think Bowen's had his time, and I think maybe that kind of hat trick that he scored kind mm. of inflated his kind of value in the FPL kind of sphere to be honest because if you look before it and past it hasn't really done anything else since the hat trick to be honest oh Jake there's always one there's always one technical issue on these streams isn't there it's never smooth sailing it's never smooth sailing is it guys uh, hopefully we can get Jake back in uh, for the second part of the stream but we'll have to wait and see what's happening with him it does look like his connection has potentially fallen off a cliff uh, do let me know if the stream is still live because uh, I don't want it to be my connection that's absolutely shat bed but it does look like Jake has had a little bit of an accident so we'll, we'll, we'll wait to see if we can get him back um, but do put in the chat if you can still see the stream that would be appreciated uh, by me let me see if I can ring him back Connection has been lost. Let's see if we can bring him back. Uh, <coughs> it's not looking good. It's not looking good at all. Hopefully we can get him back. It would be nice. But if not, we'll move on. There's nothing we can do about that one. Oh, we've got an answer, ladies and gentlemen. Bloody hell. The, the wife, I just went, honestly, Tom, as soon as I, I've started this new job next week, and as soon as my money comes in, that's a little bit more lucrative than I've been earning. I am sorting myself a nice little setup. Nice camera and some decent fucking Wi Fi. <laughs> I mean at the moment at the moment you're just audio. You're not even video. Um Oh well we're moving on to you anyway now, aren't we? So it's We are we are indeed, mate. I'd I mean I'd like to see your face. It would be nice well, to well, see the face. Well, we said this earlier and I popped up when you were least expecting it, so you know. True, know. true, true, true. Well, you know, you can just enjoy Whoever I can't remember what player that is to be honest. What player what? have you got? What have you player you've got on the Skype? Oh, it's it's Curtis Jones, isn't it? For <laughs> God's sake! Oh dear. Right, let's go I and must, move on to my team. Then. Got that Curtis Jones shirt, a pro fucking shirt for Liverpool. And the more the season's gone on, I'm like, why did I not just get a McAllister shirt? I've really enjoyed him. I, I did it as a joke, and I'm like, that was an expensive fucking joke, mate. <laughs> Uh, it is what it is, mate. It is what it is. You know, maybe maybe you'll go on to have like a stellar career and Ballon d'Or and all that. Exactly, exactly. Uh, <laughs> right, let's move on and let's take a look at how my team did in game week twenty nine. No free hit for me. Did take a minus four to get Ivan Tony in, and as you can see, we ended up picking up fifteen points, about a twenty k rank decrease. No one delivered in my team. Genuinely, no one delivered. The highest scoring player was Ariola with three points. That says it all, doesn't it, about game week, <laughs> game week 29, to be honest. If my goalkeeper with three points was the highest scoring player. Um, yeah, it was, it, was, it, was a, it was a big disaster, to be honest. Um, uh, who would have called Spurs' result, though? That's the only thing I will say, is your saving grace. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I think, I think that was such a big thing as well for the people that didn't free hit, like me. You know, the people that had the triple Spurs and obviously banked quite heavily on them to do extremely mm. well and it didn't obviously pay off. I think that's probably the only upside, to be honest, of the week that I didn't free hit and didn't waste my chip and now I have the opportunity to go and build a really good team in 34. Whereas those people that spunked it on this terrible week, I'm, I'm, like, I'm at an advantage on them, you know what I mean now? That's like when you like get to know down to your little brother on FIFA and you're like, right, I'm gonna play good now. I actually was like, I was losing on purpose. I did yeah, shit yeah, on yeah. purpose there, but now who's the now who's laughing? Exactly, exactly. So when they're, you know, making their transfers for the next few weeks and trying to get the thirty four team in, you know you know, it's gonna be probably a little bit more difficult for them. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. Billy Big Bollocks here with his free hit still in hand. It's looking, it's looking pretty good, to be honest. It's looking pretty good. Um, but yeah. Well card. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, 15 points. It is what it is. 15 points. Um, not the best. I think probably the best thing to do is just move on away from this week. Um, unlike Jake, 
I actually still have my wild card. So, yeah, we've decided to play it this week. Um, we obviously dead-ended into 29, picking up as many players as we could for that blank game week. We've activated the wild card button, and this is the team that I am rocking with. Uh, we've gone for the goalkeeper pairing of Petrovic and Onana, mainly for double game week 37. Have two potentially double game week goalkeepers for that week. A back three currently of Lascelles, Gusto uh, and Bradley, who we've already spoke about in this stream. Midfield four currently of Salah, Son, Saka, Palmer. Uh, and then a front three of Solanke, Haaland and Isaac. On the bench, uh, we obviously spoke about Onana. Then we've got Garnacho, Gabriel and Branfway. What do you think about that wildcard, Jay? What would you give it out of 10? I'd give it a good good 8 out of 10, I think. I like okay. it. Um, I, I was... Um, I was looking at Petrovic. I like why you've gone for him. I was also I, I wasn't looking at Onana. I must say I was looking at Petrovic and Flecken because I did quite like Brentford's run. But um, I mean, is, does that mean you're looking for two doublers there because you're thinking of bench boosting? Yeah. So in 37, both of those will have a double game week. Yeah, fair enough. Then. That makes sense. Yeah. Gusto definitely a, a class shout. He was he was in my team. So was Branthwaite. Uh, I like Bradley. Um, he's cheap. I went for Van Dyke, but you've got your money elsewhere, which makes complete sense. Your front three is is pretty bang on what I said. I, the, the only thing is, I actually I like your Isak uh, choice because I actually didn't even consider him. I was torn between keeping Watkins or saving a bit of money and going for Darwin Nunez. I think a good um, shout. <clears throat> you up? I think a good shout, Darwin as well. Mm, the, the, he has got a bit of a knock on him but the, at the same time I'm seeing tweets where he stayed at Anfield for like the second part of the game week or something or he didn't even go to internationals so I don't know but like I, I it does seem like he'll play mm. um, and I do think he is a good player to have in um, yeah so Solanke Haaland make complete sense Bournemouth's run looks really good Haaland it's just worth having him back in your team and if, you can, if you're wild card and you might as well yeah. save having to worry about getting him back in even if you do think the Arsenal City game could be a bit cagey mm -hmm. that being said he could go and score a few so who knows um, and then yeah I like the midfield I like that you've got Salah in I rate the, the captaincy what's stopping you from going for Palmer is that the price tag <laughs> uh, I'm to be honest a little bit torn who to go for here Salah, Son and Palmer I was kind of hoping you were going to pop in with the old well, he did this again in the last five game weeks. He he <laughs> he scored five against them in the last game. Oh, don't you worry. I'm sure I can have a little look. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I like it. Um, the only person I would consider it, uh, may, potentially is um, Forrest have quite a nice run. I just, I just don't know how, how keen are you on United and potentially maybe having Gibbs-White instead of Garnacho with no. just a shot. You say no. I said no, yeah. Fair enough. Well, I'm glad we're having a good conversation about our opinions. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, your mum said to disagree more, so that's what I'm doing. Fair enough. I can't remember if they um, if they double or not in 37. They do have pretty good fixtures, but I can't remember yeah. if they double or not. And United do double in 37. And the price difference as well, to be honest. So, you know. Fair enough. So you got Salah, Son, and Palmer. Well, Chelsea won four one. So yeah, Palmer did get a goal and assist. To be fair, against Burnley. Just a heads up. Now don't start this. How did Salah do in the reverse against Brighton? Two goals. Oh no. <laughs> oh, this could be a real toss up here. To be fair, oh. and Son. No, oh, Son. Didn't even, I don't think Son played actually. Well, we well looking at the uh, the members chat here. Uh, shout out to K Bashir. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, my friend. Uh, he has joined the FPL Tom Fan Pack Club, so welcome. Uh, well, some some people have come up with a different name for it now. It, it's uh, amongst the members, it's become the Soggy Biscuit Club, but that's that's the unofficial name. It's not a name that's sticking. No the SBC. In, no pun intended there. Um, uh, but a turkey in a bush has said Salah and Palmer got two goals slash assists against this weekend's opponent opponents in the reverse, while Son blanked. Yeah, that is a way to Luton though, and I do feel like that is a 
I think it's a different story being away to Luton and being at home to Luton because mm. I feel like Luton have put up a decent fight against all of the top sides, really. True. Uh, but then when they've gone away, it's just not quite been enough and the sides have scored a few more against them. So, yeah, I, I feel like that someone could be a little bit uh, misleading, but there's no doubt that Salah at home to Burnley and Palmer at home... No, Salah at home to Brighton, Palmer at home to Burnley. They just they are great op- great options to... Uh, contend with if you're a little bit in doubt over Son and it's actually got my head now moving towards Cole Palmer Oh here we go, it's started already It has It's started already Uh, Kay Bashir, again, if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly, do put it in the chat and we will get it right, you are a member now you're paying for that privilege so I've got to get the name right, Uh, he said Tom what do you think about Salah's minutes Uh, what will they be like against Brighton, should it be something to worry about, for me personally I don't think it's. I don't think it will be. I think he'll be fine. Yeah. Hey, Ray. Cool, cool. Uh, right, let's move on to talk about double game week thirty-four and all the other potential doubles. Now, this is from Ben Krellin's spreadsheet. As always, there will be a link to that in the description. He's the go-to guy for all this future planning. So, if you want to go and check this out, do a little bit of research in your own time. Or if you want to take a screenshot of this for future kind of planning, utility, or whatever, you'll have my beautiful face. So you can take a screenshot in three, two, one. There you go. You get to see me smiling as well on that little screenshot. You know, that'll help you through. Uh, How do I look on that? Well, you're not in it. You're not in it. You, you, you haven't <laughs> still loaded back in. You're still lagging out. Oh, well. Oh, well. Oh, well. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about the doubles in 34 and the blanks. Um, Jake, has any kind of team caught your eye with obviously this double coming up for the next few weeks that people should potentially be looking to kind of jump on if they haven't got the free hit chip for 34? Yeah, I would definitely be bringing a Chelsea player in. Armour um, seems like the obvious choice. I think Gusto is a really good opportunity, a really good option in the defence. Mm. Um, and then I think you could even even maybe raise some kind of claim for uh, for Lewis Jackson, but maybe he's one of those that you just hold off on and just see how they get started. Because like we've said, Chelsea can uh, deceive the, those when they have a nice run of fixtures and fail to actually get the results that they should be getting on paper. Um, and then... Other than that, I think I think it's the obvious ones. You've got Liverpool with a really decent run, albeit they've got that away game against United, but they have the double two weeks later. So I think those fixtures for Liverpool look really good. I think having Salah backs pretty much a must. Um, and once again, having maybe a centre-half for Liverpool because of maybe the, the doubts over the full-backs, definitely not worth bringing Trent back yet. Having Bradley in for the cheap side of things is is understandable. Van Dijk can, like will play every game, so he, he could be a someone to consider. And then, of course, like we say, the the option of Darwin up top is also something to consider. Um, that being said, there is quite a nice amount of striker options at the moment. You're going to have to get Haaland back at some point. I think if you're wild carding, it's worth just bringing him in because. I know they've got two fairly tricky games at home, but they are at home and it is Manchester City. But after those games, Arsenal and Villa, they've got one hell of a run in. I know they don't have the doubles until game week 37, but I think you can bank on Haaland getting quite a few goals in that run in. So, yeah, I think they're the main ones. I quite like Everton's run as well. And I Mm. think um, Branthwaite is someone that may go under the radar and he's a very cheap option. Yep. He's a great alternative to have just sitting on the bench, but also with Everton's run, they've got Bournemouth, they've got Burnley, they've got that double. I know they've got Liverpool, they've got Forest in it, it's still they've got double, Brentford, it? Sheffield United. It's, it's a really nice set of fixtures for, for Everton, and they are in the top three, I know, at least for clean sheets this season. Yep. So I think Brampton's also a nice little rogue one to go for or to consider. Um, yeah, I think I think that's my speaking done for this section (laughs) nice (laughs) nice uh yeah i definitely think chelsea and tottenham are probably ones that you want to be looking to invest in if you have got that free hit chip still available because they both do have well one of them doesn't even have a game and then chelsea do play uh arsenal but then after that you potentially get in back-to-back double game weeks which would be absolutely you know mesmeric if you like to be honest and i do feel like 
there are so many good assets from these teams. You've obviously got, I think, the two standouts for both, which are going to be Son and Palmer. But then outside of that, there's definitely huge scope to go for with these players. Like you've mentioned there, Nicholas Jackson, obviously been a little bit of a troll. He is on nine yellow cards, so is one one away from suspension. And I think it would be pretty typical that he would just go and pick up a, another yellow just to kind of nullify himself, if you know what I mean. But there is definitely some good quality other assets from these uh, teams as well to be uh, kind of targeting over the next few weeks. Yeah, definitely. Cool, 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 mate. Um... <laughs> just a heads up Palmer actually scored in his last game against Burnley for City oh well that you know what maybe, maybe the Cole Palmer captain trains leaving the station mm, he does seem like a sensible option I think it is that price tag that was that just that little daunting thing of how cheap he is but actually he's just so clear <laughs> like I said I, th- I think you have to judge sometimes FPL not based on people's prices yeah, they're also not in Europe, yeah. so he's going to play every game, every yeah. minute, unless like until the result is finalised. Chelsea only get taken off if they're comfortably winning. Yeah, Salah could be a rotation risk still, just because he is only just coming back from to full fitness, and we have got a lot of games coming up with Europe. And the same can be said with. Um, who was the other option? Oh no, the same can't be said with Son. So with Son, the, the the only reason why I think Son may be just one of those to maybe avoid is just the fact that you don't have enough information on him. But mm. at the end of the day, it's Son, and he could just turn up. Yeah. So I think you just got to go with, without any statistics to back him up against Luton in particular. You have to see him in front of goal at home against the side that may be in the bottom three. He is going to be likely to score. You would put your money on him, but. Unfortunately for him, I think Cole Palmer's statistics are really pushing me over the edge. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. He, 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 his per 90 data, I remember having a look a few game weeks ago, is very comparable to Erling Haaland, like point, mm. points per 90. So definitely captaincy material. And yeah. I think once you do get over the fact that you are captain in a 5.8 million player, just get over it. You know what I mean? Grow yeah, up. agreed. Yeah, just like, yeah, exactly. Be different. Yeah. Stop sticking to Haaland, you Wally. Yeah, yeah, that showed him. That showed him, mate. You tell him. Uh, we do have some questions before we do finish up today's stream. Uh, Attack in the Bush has said, best Liverpool asset out of Darwin, Diaz and McAllister. It's Darwin. Got yeah. to be Darwin. I agree. Um, but I, do, I understand why McAllister's making the cut now because he's popped up with a couple of goals. Now that Endo is playing a lot more consistently, he's been pushed up a lot higher. And of course, with Salah not fully fit, he's been on the penalties and has been pretty solid on them. So I understand that. And if you want to go rogue, then why the hell not? Because I can't imagine he's terribly expensive. Diaz is consistent and will play, but I would be put off by the fact that he has missed a whole hatful of chances this season. He cannot score. but He just cannot. I think I'd argue that Darwin's got more composure than Diaz. All right. Okay. All right. I can get on board with but, that. Oh, yeah. Overall, I go Darwin there. Good. 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 Uh, Kay Bashir, I did get the name right. Get in there. Uh, and he says he's delighted to have joined the community. Hopefully, he's not too late. Well, you're not too late, my friend. The party is just getting started at the Soggy Biscuit Club. Um, <laughs> the biscuit has just been removed from the tin. Yeah. The biscuit is fresh out. The circle has been made. Um, yeah. Uh, if you do want to become a member um, and taste some delectable treats, do hit that join button just next to the subscribe button as well. It does cost 99p. You do get priority in the chat for this stream and the preview stream. You get the cool little emojis as well that are kicking about in the chat. You also get a little symbol next to your name so you know you get the priority. So, uh, you know, when these streams do get a little bit packed on deadline and there's a lot of people asking a lot of questions, you will get priority. So for 99p, it's probably worth it. Probably. Mm-hmm. And there's also, you know, some biscuit-based stuff. But There it is. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, more, that's more to the side. It's a bit like the Freemasons, really. Like, you know, you do get the cool perks, but at the same time, there's the kind of CD biscuit based stuff that I I hope I hope you get like a random sponsor and it'd be like Rich T or Gary Baldy. Oh yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well I mean I mean they're more like sperm donors. 
I feel like either one of them would go hand in hand, to be honest. Mm. You could. You could have both. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You could be talking about sperm donors whilst eating a rich tea or something. Yeah, I could be like, hey, look at this sample that's just come from the lab. This is oh. mm, high quality <laughs> stuff. High grade. <laughs> Uh, so if you are looking for a uh, potential donor maybe the husband isn't providing the juice that you need for a child uh, do go and check the link in the description (laughs) Uh, obviously obviously we're not we're not we're not sperm donors not yet anyway but um, yeah hopefully hopefully some sponsors come along they see the high quality content that we're producing here Um, and yeah they go for it Um, back to FPL um saint ledger has said he's most likely wild card in next week uh he said should i be sensible and bring in salah with my one free transfer or go for palmer feel like everyone owns both interesting point on that one who do you think you should go for for just this one week because he's obviously going to be wild card in next week who do you feel has the higher upside for this week probably Palmer. you know I think Palmer is a like a, is is a banker to play the full ninety minutes, whereas I do think Salah could be taken off after the hour or something just to just to make sure he's like fresh. Yeah. Um. I think yeah. I I also think Brighton can perform. I think Burnley will struggle against Chelsea, mm. so I do think Chelsea will have more opportunities. I know Liverpool will create chances at home. But Brighton do play do play well against Liverpool, um, especially of late. We drew with them in the reverse. I know Salah scored twice, but I think one at least was from the spot. Um, I think yeah. I, I just feel like I think Palmer is more involved in the game. I know Salah will pop up and get goals in any kind of game, but I think he relies a lot on the ball being found to him. Whereas Palmer, it, like the play, the the position he plays in. He's just all over the pitch, so he could be playing as that number six, like deep line midfielder, collecting the ball and just ping one over, and he's got an assist. Mm. He could then be on the right hand side, like Salah, and cut inside and score. And they're both on penalties, so I think I would just pip it with Palmer. All right, okay. I think Palmer's penalty taken as well has massively increased after the FA Cup performance from Sterling as well. <laughs> like he, it, it's always going to be Palmer now. Sterling is not going to be allowed to take a penalty again after that. Disaster. I'd even put Palmer on the free kicks after the free kick he took. Exactly, exactly. So uh, I think Palmer's value has massively increased over the past uh, past week or so. To be honest, uh, a turkey in a bush has made a good point though. Salah's price is to do due to go up tonight. So potentially, if you are, you know, maybe scrambling around for that extra one point, not one, not one point, 0.1 or 0.2 million, that potentially could be a factor as well. But I always tend to personally not make my decisions based off price. I think sometimes you can kind of be led astray with price rises or decreases rather than just looking at a player that's going to do significantly well over the next few weeks or even in just this next game week, to be honest. So, you know, it is it is a potential argument, but for me personally, I just think I favour kind of excluding price from my mind, to be honest. Okay, well, let's say that it is the sensible decision for St. Ledger to go for the free hit, no, for the wild card next week. Yeah. Would you say this week it's worth him taking a minus four for Salah and Palmer? No. He might as well wild card this week if he's going to do that. That's what I was thinking. If he's going to do both, is it worth just wild carding? But at the same time, I do feel like he's not. He's not going to miss out if he, he he's not going to miss out if he has both players in, and I would be very surprised if they both failed to contribute somewhat. Yeah. I would not be surprised also if they both pushed double digits. Yeah, I'm just going to have a look who's the actual uh, lower owned of the two. My mind is telling me Salah's going to be the lower owned. I wouldn't be surprised considering he's been out for so long. Yeah, Salah's ten percent less owned than Palmer. So you do feel that if Salah does pop off, there is that higher probability that he's going to get you better rank. But then same on the flip side, if Palmer pops off and you haven't got him, his EO is probably going to absolutely destroy you. So it's a bit of both, isn't it, with that one? That's why I'm taking the minus and bringing them both in. But of course, I don't have the the joys of a wild card awaiting me next week. Yeah, that you took that luxury away from yourself a few weeks ago. Why? Why did I do it? Why I don't know. There I must have... I'm going to have to go back and watch the stream where you did it because I don't even <laughs> remember like 
doing it. Like, I don't remember I must telling have done you. It on, to go I for think it. I might have done it on the deadline or oh, something. Oh, you know. numpty. You yeah. numpty. I've only got myself to blame. Yeah, though. you do. You do. It's all right. Next year, lads, right? This is what's going to happen. Yeah. You're going to win the FPL challenge mode, right? You're going to get the free holiday. Obviously, you'll be taking me, right? Yeah. yeah. And there's no question of that. Um, and then next year, you're going to go on to win the whole of FPL. Well, there we go. Quarter of a mil. Happy days. I don't. I don't think it is a quarter. That's the. That's the sun one, mate. How much is this one? Nothing. Isn't it? No, it's nothing. I think you win like a copy of FIFA and a bag. I'm not even joking. He's googling it. I can hear the typing. <laughs> Genuinely, yeah, I think it's like a copy of FIFA and like a Premier League bag. That's mad. Yeah. Wow, that is terrible. Go on, you've got it in front of you. What do you win? I think it's just, I think, I don't know. It seems to be like VIP hospitality for two games next year. I mean, that's a bit, that's a bit poor, isn't it? That's like a grand at most. Well, it depends where you're going for hospitality, doesn't it? Yeah, literally. Well, I'm going Luton. Oh, here we go. So if you win, seven night break in the UK inclusive of two VIP hospitality and two 24 to 25 Premier League matches, a selection of experiences at popular UK tourist attractions. So that would be like a ticket to Madame Two Swords then? Literally. Includes travel and seven nights accommodation, official night football, Oh, EA Sports game. There it is. A lap- oh, a laptop or SIM-free smartphone. Okay, that's pretty decent. Noise cancelling headphones. Yeah. And then a personalised FPL bundle consisting of a rucksack, t-shirt, mug, thermal bottle, stress ball, pen, pad, and keyring. Okay, that's better than I thought it was. Yeah, but it's a lot worse than the t- the quarter of a mil I said. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I thought, I thought, I I thought it was just like you win a copy of FIFA and like a bag. At least you're getting like a, a phone and a ticket to Madden Two Swords. Yeah, that is true. But you know, it is. I guess it is what it is. Um, but I feel like some of those prizes should be given out for this challenge mode. Well, you get you get the you get EA Sports gain if you come between eleventh and twentieth as well. Oh right, whoop whoop to do. Yeah. To be fair, if you came twentieth in this game, you should be getting more than just FIFA. Literally, that's what I mean. Like. To be honest, I think they need to potentially take a look at So Rare and some of the prizes they give out. You know what I mean? Like signed shirts or experiences with players. Definitely. Because if you come in, like, think how many people are playing. There's like close to 10 million players this season. And if you're coming in the 20th and all you're winning is a copy of FIFA, it's just a bit, you're just a bit like, oh, is that it? Just feel a bit empty, wouldn't it? Yeah, no, I get that. No, it's a bit poor, that. I have that a uh, little bit of a soccer punch, to be honest. I was getting ready for that quarter of a mil. I've actually budgeted myself for winning that, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's always in my plan as well, is just win FPL. But now all I know is I'm winning a laptop and FIFA. Well, take it down cash converters. You'll have yourself about a grand. So, <laughs> close, close to it. I'm going mad and two swords, though, whether you like oh, it or yeah, not. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's the real bargain there that you get in. Oh, yeah. Wait, who said they're playing Douglas Louise instead of Palmer? Right, we have actually got some questions that have been flying in <laughs> while we while we've been just waffling shit about Madden Two Swords. Uh, we're going to start off with the member one first, K Bashir. He says, "Tom, I have Estupinian, Doherty, Regulon, Moreno, and a Doji. If I bring in Salah, I'll have to take a minus four to bring in someone like Gusto. But who do you think it's worth, and who should I take out?" Um. I mean, Regulon's obviously suspended, so he's probably candidate number one. <laughs> um, looking at the fixtures as well, Brentford don't have any more doubles. Some of the fixtures are okay, though, so he potentially could stay. I think I'd go Doherty, you know. I think he'd probably be the one that I'd take out. No double game weeks coming up. Some pretty tough fixtures in there. Tottenham, Arsenal, City over the next five as well, so... <laughs> Probably Doherty yeah. would be the one, mate, if you wanted to go and uh, bring Gusto in. Nothing from you? No, 
You've, oh. you've, you've said it to be honest. All oh, right, well, that's I was just, if thing. anything, you went get Doherty out, and I was like, oh, I've got Doherty in my team still. <laughs> no, no, it's fine, lad. It's fine. You've got your what? Oh, I'll oh, wait. Ah, uh, there is that. Oh, by the way, I've made my minus four. I have actually committed to it. Good, good. I like that. Uh, would you take a minus eight and get rid of Morris for Solanke? Uh, no. Okay. Because you're going to free hit in 34 realistically. So, like, that's. Just, that, yeah, that I'll just say it next meaning. week. Yeah, okay, okay. I'll bring Harland in next week, I believe. Yeah, that's probably probably wise, mate. Yeah. Although they're playing Villa. So... Yeah, but, I don't know. Uh, I, I just don't want to leave them too long. I think I may even regret not bringing them in this week, but I think Salah and Palmer are a little bit more. Um,. They just get to catch the eye a little bit more with the fixtures they've got and the fixtures they've got coming up as well. All right, okay. Uh, next question is Poro versus Adoji. Uh, do you think? Do you reckon? Sorry, Poro will offer more of a threat. He's lost set pieces to Madison though. Who would you go for if you were potentially on a wild card or looking for a transfer this week, Jake? Poro or Adoji? I think I'd stick with Poro to be fair. Okay, there's quite a big price difference in them though. I think it's going to be close. Well, it, to it just mil. depends. It just depends where else you're going to spend your money. But if you've got the money, I'd go for Poro. I think. Um, I think he's just been in better form recently. I mean, I guess those he's been not more recently, but even so, I feel like I, I'd go Poro. Okay. All right. Uh, Jamie has said he can't decide who to sell for. I'm guessing Salah. He's put. I have Saka, Odegaard, Madison, and Foden. I don't want to sell Foden. But both the other teams have Luton at home in the next two. Who would you sell for Salah there, Jake? Can you afford Salah if you take Odegaard out? Because if you can, I think that's the sensible one. I'd agree with that argument as well there. I'd agree. Um, Yeah. If not, probably would just sacrifice Saka. You've then still got Odegaard because he can still score. He'll get assists. He's he's, going to play every single game, isn't he? Mm. Um. Not that Saka isn't, but I mean, like, if you need that extra money to get Salah, I think sacrificing Saka might be the better option. I'd definitely keep Son, and I think Madison. If you can't afford him for Odegaard, I'd feel like Madison's not really going to do much either. All right, okay, I can get on board with that. Um, would you be playing Douglas Louise instead of Palmer? I heard you grunt at this one. Um... I assume he's saying that because he's going to have, like, that would be the minus four he would take, hypothetically, I assume. Because he's saying he wants to bring in Palmer or Salah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I'd, I'd be playing. Palmer, I'd probably I'd play guess. Douglas Luiz as well as Palmer. So I don't know who you're taking. Who are you taking out for Palmer or for Salah? Hypothetically, who is your free transfer going to be for? Like, is it Douglas Luiz or have you got any other midfield options that we may be better? Because I'd probably play Douglas Luiz, especially if you're wild card in next week. You might as well just keep him in at home to Wolves. Mm. All right, okay. That might be his transfer this week, looking back out of the chart. But um, let what us partner know. to Louise? Yeah, I probably wouldn't do that if I could, if I could avoid it, just because you're going to wild card next week. I know, but I bring Palmer. Palmer is that cheap that you could probably bring him in for anyone, and you're bound to have someone in that midfield that you could play instead. Take out instead of Douglas Louise. True, true. And if you wild card in next week, maybe Saka. Maybe, yeah, maybe. It depends how much value you've got tied in him, though. That could be the the big issue. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, Saint Ledger has also said, "If you, if I win, you can have mine." Pretty sure they won't be flying me out from New Zealand. That's pretty tight if they don't. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're definitely good. Yeah. But imagine winning, and then you come all the way over to the UK and get like uh, Madden Two Swords tickets. Right. Pleasure Beach. <laughs> oh, you're going skeg. You've got an all-inclusive caravan at Butlins. Like you just no, you'd think, the you'd think they would. Oh. That you'd think they would fly you out. You'd hope so. You would hope so. Uh, he's put Bowen is definitely going out. Oh, fair enough. Uh, he's put Douglas Louise would be for a minus four, um, but we both said we don't think the minus four is worth it. No, probably. Like, I get it, especially if you're wild. If you weren't wild card in next week, I'd say maybe do it. Yeah. Um. I don't know, mate. I, I actually don't know. I, I'm 
I'd probably be more inclined to say that the, the minus four actually would pay off. Mm. But I understand you're trying to be sensible and keep your, keep your job here, Tom. So I understand why you're trying to be a little bit wary. But arguably, taking Bowen out and Douglas Louise out for Palmer and Salah, albeit for a minus four, albeit a week before a wild card, I wouldn't be surprised if he still reaps the rewards of that. Okay, okay. I think I think it is just probably one of those where it's a gut feeling. Mm. I think if you've got your, it's thinking, a gut feeling, but there is an educated like there's an educated side to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. It's not a stupid it. minus four to take, mm. but it does feel like if you've got your thinking cap on, you're probably not gonna play it. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, yeah. But my thinking cap is not fully on. I must no, say. No, no, no. Yours has been backwards all season, to be honest. <laughs> Um, Jamie has also put he has plenty of money uh, as I don't have Haaland lol uh, but I have a feeling that Odegaard can get something against City and Luton fair enough like we said if you've got a feeling go for it just enjoy the game I think that's the main thing um, so if you feel that I yeah. assume that's talking about yeah that's talking about who to bring Salah in for Yeah. in which case I would say You've got plenty of money. Well, I do think you need to be bringing in Haaland at some point, Jamie. So I don't think you should be wasting all your money. But so say you take out Madison for Salah, and then you don't have enough. I'm not saying you don't, but I would definitely bring Haaland in at some point. I get why you might be reluctant to use it this week. You definitely should be saving some of that money or a chunk of that money for Haaland to be an easy asset to bring back mm. soon. So yeah, I guess if you're really keen on keeping Odegaard, then it's between Saka. Listen, I'd be very reluctant. If not, I'd probably be against um, taking Son out for Salah. I think you're kind of just going against. You're just kind of cancelling yourself out, really. Yeah, I agree with that. I do agree with that one. Uh, going to move on to the most important question of the week, Jake. I'm going to ask mm. you for your highest scoring game of the week. Oh, God, I don't even know who's playing this weekend properly. Good. Do you want to announce bed shit whilst I do this? Yeah, I'll, I'll announce bed shit. Don't worry, mate. Uh, the votes have been piling in for bed shitter of the week. It's quite a close one this week, and I definitely think for very good reasons. But we do have a winner with 52% of the vote. Uh, the YouTube percentage as well haven't worked. Uh, so Regulon is the winner with 52% of the vote. So congratulations to him. Finishing the week on minus two after picking up a red card early in the Brentford Burnley game. Son unfortunately didn't win out. 47% for him. The maths just don't make sense with that one, but it is what it is as always <laughs> on this uh, on this dodgy stream. Uh, but yeah, congratulations to Regulon for bed shitter of the week. Jake, talk to me, my man. What 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 are we doing here? I'm actually going to... I hope I don't take yours from you here. I've got a little feeling about Sheffield United and Fulham. Okay, okay. Fulham have been playing um, some very good stuff recently. They have, they have. And who knows how Sheffield will do because they'll either give them a game and maybe get a couple of goals or absolutely capitulate like they have uh, been quite prone to doing, especially at home. Mm. So, yeah, I'm going to go for that game. All right, okay. I think there's two that are screaming out to me. Mm. Uh, I'm looking at Nottingham Forest versus Crystal Palace. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Bournemouth Everton as well seems like a game where goals would be flying. So I think I'm. It's a shame go... it's not a Goodison that because yeah. then that would be a banker for goals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think I'm going to go for Forest Palace. That to me has got yeah, uh, um... an eight goal thriller all over it. No, I like it, and yet you're still reluctant to bring Gibbs White in for Garnacho. Well, it is what it is, mate. You know he's going <laughs> to get a hat trick now, isn't he? <laughs> Uh, Jamie's actually said he's been without Haaland since game week eight, so I'm in no rush to bring him in. Fair, Fair enough. enough. Fair enough. I definitely think this season there has been kind of that um, trend of not having Haaland in, you know what I mean? There's definitely been quite a well, lot of upsides. If you've had Watkins and if you've had Solanke, you've probably avoided really being embarrassed too much because even when he has slapped, other players have been really, or have been banging them in as well. So, yeah, I think if you've had Watkins, at least, you definitely, it definitely would have cancelled out a lot, a lot of um, Haaland's performances. I'm just going to I'm just gonna have a look, to be honest. I'm going to look at what his points have kind of been like. Any weeks where you've probably taken a pretty big hit on him. Uh, game week 24, he picked up 13 points. Game week 12, 16. 
Game week 10, 16. Go on. Game week 12 was 14. Game week... No, 16. Game week 10 was 16. Game week 1 was 13. Game week 4 was 20. Game week 24 was 13. Jesus. But well, I'm looking that... at it. I'm trying to compare Watkins to him, actually. <clears throat> Watkins is only really... He had 11 points in game week 14, mm. 11 in game week 9, and the rest of his double-digit hauls will be mostly in the second half of the season. Yeah. But I, I, I do feel like, though, like you could have potentially gotten away with it. Mm. Especially since his injury. You know what I mean? Oh, well, Jamie will no doubt be ahead of me, and I've had Haaland in from the start. Well, yeah, but then that's because you bring in absolute wallies. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, right, I think we're going to leave it there unless anyone does have any other final questions. Uh, it's been a pretty good stream. It's been good to be back. Uh, definitely. definitely enjoyed it. Um, I hope you guys have as well too. Obviously, there's been some technical issues as always in these streams, but that's part of the parcel now. That's what you get with this high-quality product. I hope I haven't actually been visible so I'm just going to be proper digging the winner just then. No, 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 mate. It's fine. You can start start the uh, start the biscuit parade, really, if you want, like. <laughs> get warmed up i'll be around in a minute sound um but like i said there will be a deadline stream on saturday morning uh, for game week 30 so do come along to that if you have any questions or want your team reviewing as well it's quite a quick turnaround to to game week 31 as well me and jake will be live on monday for another preview stream i'll also be live on tuesday afternoon as well for a deadline stream for game week 31 then we'll probably be back like friday for game yeah, week 32 preview there's lots of stuff coming on there is lots of stuff going off on the channel so if you don't want to miss out you like hearing us two waffle absolute shite and you want to be part of it do hit that subscribe button or become a member as well to the channel like i said it does cost 99p it's extremely cheap you do get priority in the chat you also get exclusive kind of access to the biscuit room as well um <laughs> that you know will become available to certain members as well so you know if you want to become part of that join be welcome uh but yeah i think we're going to leave it there so thank you very much guys uh jake any final remarks from you my friend um nah just go for that go for that minus four saint ledge go for it get salary in get palmer in screw what fpl tom says go good. with it good good <laughs> yeah Thanks for that one, mate. Right, I will see you guys on Saturday. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.